So one of the truly remarkable things about James Clerk Maxwell's electromagnetic wave theory was the description that many diverse phenomena were actually the same thing. So visible light, ultraviolet light beyond the visible part of the spectrum beyond the blue, the infrared, so the near infrared light just beyond the red part of the spectrum into thermal infrared where there is emitted radiation from warm objects. And then through to the microwave and the radio part of the spectrum is that all of these phenomena are all electromagnetic radiation. In the microwave part of the spectrum, we're actually using microwaves almost every day. Our mobile phone signal is based on an L-band microwave signal. The GPS signal coming from the GPS satellites is also an L-band signal. Your microwave oven may be using microwaves of a wavelength of a few centimetres. So one of the questions you might ask is, well, what actually is electromagnetic radiation? And the answer to that is we don't really know in terms of the absolute properties of electromagnetic radiation, but we have models that help to describe that. The particle nature of light is very useful in some contexts, and microwave remote sensing in the passive sounding of the atmosphere is very helpful to use the particle nature of light as an explanation of how things are physically happening. So that's one model by which we can describe electromagnetic radiation, that it's in small particles, small lumps of energy that we call photons. In radar remote sensing, it's really useful to think about electromagnetic radiation as waves. So here's, here's an example of a wave, and this is about uh, a wave, sort of my scale model of a, of a microwave. Now we describe electromagnetic radiation as a wave because it's a convenient model. Many of the properties of electromagnetic radiation seem to emulate what you would expect if they were waves. And that model is, is very successful in describing and uh, designing microwave systems. We typically describe the electromagnetic wave in terms of its electric field oscillation. So there is an oscillating electric field in one direction. So you might imagine that it's, it's vertical, so up and down in, in this context. And that is a transverse wave, so the wave is, is travelling in a direction perpendicular to the oscillation of the electric field. There's also a magnetic field in there. This is an electromagnetic wave. So there's an electric field and there's also an oscillating magnetic field. And one induces the other and that's how it manages to uh, travel through space, even when there is no medium. So it can travel through a vacuum because it is the electric field induces the magnetic field and the magnetic field then induces the electric field. And that's a convenient way to describe electromagnetic radiation. So what are the properties of electromagnetic radiation that we need to consider? Well, if it's a wave, we have to consider the uh, the wavelength, which is the dimension, the spatial dimension over which it repeats itself. So this wave, for example, is in the region of five centimeters, the wavelength. So it's actually typical of a, of a C-band system. So satellite radar like the, the Sentinel-1 or the ERS satellite, they've all used C-band wavelengths, so wavelengths much like this sort of size. We have to consider the speed of the wave. So the, the speed of the wave through the atmosphere or through a vacuum is approximately three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. And in a radar imaging context, that's quite suitable. If we're looking at altimeters, we have to consider that the speed speed of those electromagnetic waves actually changes as it goes through the atmosphere. So although we often consider the speed of light to be a constant, it is a constant in a vacuum. When it travels through a medium, it actually slows down a little bit. For imaging radar, we don't have to worry too much about that small change in velocity through the atmosphere. 
For altimeters, because you're trying to measure distances of a few centimeters, you have to take into account the change in the velocity. And that velocity is one of the key characteristics of electromagnetic radiation. The other key characteristics, so along with the, the speed of the wave, how fast it's traveling through the medium, and also the wavelength, is that if the speed and the wavelength are known, then the frequency, so how many oscillations per second as it travels through space. That's measured in units of hertz, which is the per second. So a wave that oscillates at a thousand oscillations per second, we would say, is a thousand hertz. A wave of this length, of about five centimeters, is approximately five gigahertz. The other important property of electromagnetic radiation is because it's a, transver a transverse oscillation, it has polarization. And polarization describes the way that this oscillation in the plane of direction of travel can be oscillating vertically, but it could also be oscillating horizontally. And we would describe those waves as horizontally polarized or vertically polarized. In terms of polarization, it can become more complex because the wave can actually do a spiral like a corkscrew. And then we talk about circular polarization. One other key property of electromagnetic wave is we want to sometimes describe the cycle that the wave is in. So at what point in the cycle is this wave? So this wave, if we start at this end, it goes to a trough and then it comes up to a peak and then up down to a trough again. But it may be displaced, so the peaks and troughs are at different locations. The wavelength, the frequency, the speed, the polarization may all be identical, but the location of where the peaks and the troughs are may be slightly different. That property we call the phase of the wave, and that the measurement of the phase difference between two waves is a key property that we can measure in a radar system. Another important feature of electromagnetic waves is what we call coherence. Coherence is the property of two waves that allows them to combine together so that peaks and troughs might actually cancel out or multiple peaks might add together to make a bigger wave. Typically this only happens when you have waves that are of exactly the same wavelength or frequency. In a radar system that's fine because we are transmitting our own waves and we can fix it to a particular frequency or wavelength and then we can be quite confident that the waves will be coherent and they will combine together in constructive or destructive ways. The coherence of a wave is really important for when we look at the construction of a synthetic aperture radar and also when we look at radar interferometry.